Good afternoon, my name is Jan Demirjola from Abacus Data Mining Solutions. Today I am going to be demonstrating you how you can run your SSIS packages, in other words, orchestrate them using parallel processing ETL tool. But before going into that uh, demonstration, I would like to show two conventional methods that are widely used in the industry. The first method is called parent-child method. In this method, you have a master package, and master package calls individual children packages. It's really good for small uh, data warehouse implementations. If you have objects that are more than, let's say, 15, then you need to go for another um, method. The reason behind it is, as you can see, you are building essentially these snails, and these snails are hard-coded. In other words, the minute you need to add a new child package, you need to modify our master package. That's the first reason. The second reason is a little bit more pra practical purposes. As you can see, all the children are executed within the same runtime. This creates an issue because let's say your CRM people are asking for your data to be refreshed every 15 minutes. On the other hand, your sales guys are asking the data to be refreshed every 30 minutes or every, every day then it becomes an issue. You either have two master packages, which becomes really hard to maintain, or you are going to be running all the packages all the time, which may not be feasible. So people come up with a new way of running your SSIS packages. In this new way, you essentially have to call these packages based on metadata. And in order to call it, you need to have a, a database of your scheduled packages and you query that database and depending upon the result of the query, you build the schedule and then you execute them. The only drawback of this application, right now you are seeing the single threaded version, but you can have multiple threads, multi-threaded as well. You can run the packages in multi-threaded as well. The only drawback of this application is the fact that you cannot rerun. In other words, if something goes wrong along the way, you need to start all over again, or you need to implement your own checkpoint logic. By default, um, SSIS's checkpoint doesn't support objects, and this creates an object output. So, how we do it using parallel processing ETL tool? We create the component, and now I'm going to create um, one job with you as well. There are two jobs or have uh, already been created. Um, I have a bunch of SSIS packages, about 30 of them, but I'm not going to create all of them, believe me. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull data from AdventureWorks uh, DW and push it to my test database. Before doing that, I'm just going to truncate the tables and make sure all three tables are empty. And also, I'd like to show you that I not only have SSIS packages on my file system, but also I have and SSIS package on my MSDB, just for demonstration purposes. Let's start. I am going to add my DIM account to my job list. So job name should be DIM account. I can put anything I want, but I want it to be descriptive as possible, DIM account, SSIS package. I can call the rest group. And here I call the transform and pick the execute SSIS package workflow. Um, after picking that, these are my options. I can either pull down from file system, SQL server, or SSIS package store. In this case, I'm going to call it from my file system. My package name is dim account, and my package location is C colon temp SSIS. I save it, and then I just need to schedule it, and I'll be done. I would like to run it daily every 10 a.m. I close it. Now if I come to my controller and restart all of my jobs, oops, one of them already gone, and now the second one is going to come over, second one, and the third one is going to go over there as well. As you can see, I have just a single worker. I can not have as many workers as I want, and if I had, let's say, three workers, all the three jobs would have been executed all at the same time. Let's check out our tables. Now, all of them are populated, which is really cool. Now, I would like to do one more trick, which is to insert some um, parameters to my uh, query, to my package. 
this is the package that I'm running, by the way, for fact internet sales. Uh, it is pretty basic. It has got one execute SQL task and one data flow task. And the data flow task has got the source of the data flow task has got a parameter, ship date key parameter, and it is depend upon my ship date variable. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pass the ship date and make the execution parameter based. So I'm going to just copy this parameter, come over to my repository, fact internet sales, edit it. Here there's no parameter. So I need to type a parameter. My ship date is my parameter. And as a variable value, I put 2050710 and I save it. You can define as many parameters as you want. It's just add variable by just clicking on add variable button. Now let's see what's going to happen. I'm going to com come to my controller, restart all my jobs. I don't know if you remember, but AdventureWorks um, Fact Internet Sales had, I think about 2000 records. Now it just returned nine records because I essentially have just nine records with that uh, ship date. We can take a look at them individually, as you can see. So this is my demonstration for today. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to write me at cemd at abacusdms.com or you can leave a comment to this video. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.